Hello and welcome to Hope City Online. You're about to hear a message that's part of a series. Check it out and consider joining us in person on Sunday. Our vision for you is that you'd have a thriving relationship with Jesus, that you know Him, find community, and discover your purpose as you prioritize your relationship with God. Get in touch with us at hopecity.my slash hello for more details and subscribe to our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels so you don't miss any of our future content. Enjoy this message from our co-lead pastor, Emma Burden. Welcome along to our online service. My name is Emma, along with my husband, Joel. We're the lead pastors of Hope City KL, and we are thrilled that you're joining us online today for our service. And we want to really encourage you to come down in person if you can. We're about to hit Vision Sunday uh, on the 5th of November. And so throughout October, we're going to be talking about the future and where we're going as a church. So if you've been considering coming along, it'd be a great time to come next Sunday. And we would love to have you down here in PJ. Um, But today I'm talking a message called Live Worthy. So if you're taking notes or if you're not, just grab a pen and a notebook. Maybe it'll help you to listen and to take this in. But um, I am turning 40 in a couple of months. I'm on a mission fit by 40. Uh, Ask my husband how it's going. (laughs) Not very well, but I'm working on it. But I'm uh, nearly turning 40. I don't know where time has gone. And my youngest son is turning four in a couple of weeks. I just, I can't even fathom what has happened since just before COVID. Um, But I realized this week looking at him that our view of time is really different. How I see a year compared to how little George sees a year is completely different. How I would um, think of a decade is very different to how he would. He's only lived four short years of his life. And it got me thinking that um, for me to kind of dilly-dally around and waste a decade, I would really feel the pinch. In fact, just to even waste a year, I would feel the pinch. And I know I'm only 40 and I'm not past it yet, but um, no one's past it. We've all got purpose until God decides to take us, right? But, um, you know, I just, I would feel the loss of that time. I got pretty frustrated in COVID in the lockdowns. Our church was shut for 19 months and it felt like this time had been like robbed away from me. And I've got context and perspective now and I'm actually grateful for it but but for George to lose out on some time and waste a year or even a decade at the start of his life no big issue right like in theory he's got a lot of time to go and I think our age affects a lot of our perspective and how we see time but kids and teenagers they're in this playground called the world with all of this opportunity to explore this time to give a go to different um trades or skills or experiences and they can dabble and try everyone's asking them what do you want to be when you grow up and the world is their oyster but you ask someone who's 40 or 50 hey what do you want to do with your life and maybe the the window or the view screen of what they can see feels a little bit smaller or a little bit tighter now i am not here to shrink your uh opportunity landscape. I'm not here to shrink you down and put you in a box. I believe we should be learning to the very end and there's so we could never get to the end of our learning. There's always new things to do, new things to experience. But our perspective certainly shifts and changes and our priorities and the things that we would put our time to certainly change from childhood to adulthood to older age. And um, the Bible is loaded with wisdom for us to ensure that we don't waste this life, that we make the most of it. It is shrouded in wisdom. If you need some wisdom, get yourself reading Proverbs after this online service. And there is so much in there that God says over how we should conduct ourselves and how we should talk and speak and live our life and how we should interact with one another and how we should prioritize things and and what character is important and how to be generous and all that stuff is so loaded for us in order that we wouldn't waste this life and we wouldn't see time pass us by. And it's there to nurture us. It's there to nurture who we would become. And God calls us to live as Christians, which is to be Christ-like. And so every day as we're living our life, he's, he's eagerly anticipating that we would learn something and we would start to change and prioritize and do things in a way that he would do that he has outlined through his son Jesus living on this earth as we live but also throughout the generations as we have the opportunity through the bible to see what lessons other people learned through what they did and um 
The Bible is loaded with wisdom for us, and yet our pursuits are so often so carnal, so so shallow. We want certificates, we want accolades, we want maybe notoriety uh, for an expertise in a certain field. Maybe you want fame, I don't know. Maybe it's material, maybe it's really superficial. It feels really plastic, but we want all of these things, and that's what we're chasing after. And we're kind of hoping that along that journey to that stuff, uh, our character will change, we'll mature, we'll grow up, we'll learn some lessons, we'll become a better person. Um, But God calls us to something so much higher. John warned the Pharisees who were known for being self-righteous and proud and, you know, they really stood on their stature of what they'd learned and stuff. And in in Matthew chapter 3, verse 12, um, John the Baptist is in this conversation with them. They're just butting up against him, just, uh, I guess, jealous of now this notoriety that he's getting. He's out there baptizing heaps of people. And, uh, And he explains that soon one is coming who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. And it says in verse 12, his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable unquenchable fire. The Holy Spirit was given to us after Jesus has returned to heaven. So he's died on the cross. He's reappeared to his disciples. He's shown himself to be resurrected and alive again. But he goes back to the Father and he sends us his gift of the Holy Spirit, who is God. And this Holy Spirit is there to fill us with power in order that we can outwork that purpose for which God has made us for, our real purpose. And uh, we're actually created to worship God. And not just in the car when we crank up the volume on the latest Christian hits or whatever favorite musician you're into, not just our favorite songs, but in every day, in everything that we do, we are called to worship God. How we act, how we think, how we prepare, how we show up, how we interact with other people, how we react or interact with nature, even our own beings, we are to worship God in all that we do. Church, we are on the edge of an entirely new season, a new era for our church. I don't want you to miss out this series in October leading to November the 5th. We're going to unpack it over the next few weeks. But God has spoken to us so much over this year about our identity and who we are in Him. He's broken words and misconceptions that are formed in our minds. And He's been aligning us to who He has created us to be and to His will and His purpose. We've talked about idols and temptations over 2023, the temptations of this world that would distract and entangle us. And I believe that he's done it to prepare us to become a devoted part of the wider body of Christ, to live as worshipers of him that draw others to himself and to, so that many others can live in the freedom that we find in Jesus, freedom from our sin, and to have relationship with Him that's personal and active. And it's with the lover of our soul who knows us intimately and is absolutely for us. That's the God that we serve. God calls us to this higher way of living and to one where we strengthen our discipline and we do what's right according to his word, not to popular opinion or the status quo, a life that leads others to real life rather than just ourselves to this temporal plastic life. Maybe you don't know Jesus today, but let me tell you as someone who has found him for myself and I've given my life to him, that there is more to life than what you've known so far, so much more. I pray right now that through this message and beginning, maybe even with today, maybe you would dare to pray to God and ask him to show himself to you. But I pray and believe that you could discover that there's someone who loves you more than you could understand. And his name is Jesus. He actually initiated your life and he's hoping to be part of your everyday life in a tangible, present and really loving way. He's not put off by what you've been up to who you think you've become. He's not put off by those parts of you that nobody else knows. That bit of your character that you hate or perhaps that you love too much. He actually knows you better than you could ever know yourself. And like a master watchmaker who knows, he knows how exactly how you're supposed to work and what's really inside of you. And if you just ask him today to forgive you for those areas of your life where you've been sinful, those things that you've done wrong, and ask him to give you a brand new start. He'll do exactly that and he will transform you from the inside out and he will set you free. If you're a Christian, you have a call on your life to be and to make disciples. 
That means that your purpose is to live as Jesus has called you to and he's equipped you for as he's taught us to. You're to lead others to that life source that you found for yourself so that they can find him too. Now this isn't some pyramid scheme like the more people that you get saved then the better he thinks of you. God couldn't love you any more than what he, how he already loves you. But this ought to be an overflow, a reaction to the salvation that we found in Jesus Christ. Our reaction is, oh, I can't contain it. I have to tell someone about how good God is. I have to tell them how real he is, how present he is, how miraculous he is, how powerful he is, how much better than anything else he is that they might find him for themselves. You don't want to keep it to yourself. You've got to get the word out. We've got people in this church who are the first Christian in their family for maybe generations, maybe ever, and they have found God for themselves. And now maybe a few years later, maybe a decade later, they stand with their whole family around them because their family has found God too. They didn't keep it to themselves. God has turned them from their idols and turned them from their wicked ways. And they found the love and the forgiveness like nothing else that they have ever tried. Let me circle back for a second. Some of us are spending too much time and too much money trying to make life count in some way. When God has already said that your life counts, he would never have sent his son Jesus to die for you for a life that was worthless. You are worth so much to God. He loves you so much. I remember in um, New Zealand last year, our family had the opportunity to take a couple of months break and uh, we had some family over there. And so we decided to take one month and go camping in a tent around the South Island of New Zealand. And it was the most amazing experience of my life. It's such a beautiful country and God really blessed our time. But I remember being in Lake Rotiiti. I think that's how you say it because we were we had a little song <laughs> made up about Lake Roti, but uh, Roti Et, and uh, in Lake Roti Et, there's these black eels, and they're like roughly this big, and they live about a hundred years. And my son was sad because we'd gone out in a canoe to go find them, and we saw nothing. And we got back to shore, and he's like super disappointed. And then they said, "Hey, Henry, actually, if you go to that pier over there, then I think you'll find some underneath it." And so lo and behold, we go to this pier, maybe a 50 meter walk over these cobbly stones, and there was literally maybe a hundred of these eels just parked up in the shelter and shadow of this uh, pier that jetted out over the water and Henry was like in his element but there was a little signboard that told you about these eels and it turns out that they live around a hundred years and for the females at the end of their life they produce one baby eel and then they die not the baby but the mum dies so it's like this pinnacle of her life is to produce this one eel that would live after her and then she dies. And I thought, gosh, what a sad life. And how blessed are we as people of God that this life is just a prelude to eternal life. And the options are heaven or hell. And you have the option for heaven by choosing Jesus. It says in the Bible, the way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus. If we can go through the cross, if we can come before him with our sin and say sorry and ask for forgiveness, then he saves us. And uh, that's worked out through our life. We are saved at that moment. And throughout our life, he's transforming us and changing us. But we have this opportunity of eternal life in heaven. And so not like these eels where you just kind of have a baby and die and then that's the end of you and you just become fertilizer or something in the earth. This is us leaving this life into an eternal life. And it's such a powerful picture that this life is preparation for the next, that God is working things in our heart. He's revealing us. He's giving us a taste of heaven here on earth as he outworks this transformation as we turn from sin and we turn to him instead. And so it's just this amazing thing that this life is short and it's fleeting. And I know maybe some of you have had a week this week that felt like it was gonna go forever and it just wouldn't stop. And maybe the heartache or the turmoil that you're in right now feels like it's an unending season. But let me remind you and bring some hope today. This life is short and it is fleeting. We aren't just snuffed out when we're at our 80s. This is our prelude. This is preparation. Our choice is actually a gift and we get to play it out in this life. And that's why as Christians that we need not fear death. We can anticipate the next life. We can anticipate heaven, eternity with God. And so Paul wrote to the Philippians from jail. He's literally in a season of persecution and he's writing to a group of people in Philippi who are also facing some squeeze and some persecution. And he's writing this moment 
at a time when we really would have been justified to say, you know what, like this is a little bit too much. <laughs> this is like a high cost to pay for this life that God has called me to. But he writes this, he says, whatever happens while he's in jail and chained, whatever happens, conduct yourselves. In other words, live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. This gospel of Christ is so rich, so deep. It is speaking of the power and the love of God that stretches so wide, high, far and deep. Uh, he says, live worthy of that. Everything else is cheap and pale and shallow in comparison. That whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. This faith is so precious. It has to be passed on. He's urging them, don't let it fizzle out and die. Prove it through the way that you live without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved. And that's by God. This is, God will bring you through. He is not leaving you out. He has not abandoned you. He has not run away. He's not forgotten about you. He will lead you through. Prove out, let your faith prove itself that it's attached to a faithful God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had and now hear that I still have. He's encouraging them to endure it. There are seasons in life that are tough. There are challenges, there are parts of our calling, things that God leads us into that maybe seem unfair or undesirable. They're not comfortable, they're not nice, they're not enjoyable. They're not the memories that you're gonna write back home about. But there's times and seasons when God allows us to be tucked in in a rough and a hard place and Paul's encouraging us, hold on to the fight. Hold on to your faith. Watch that God is going to come through. He's going to show himself faithful. Live worthy of the calling that you have received. This uh, week, myself and my husband, Joel, we uh, hit our nine year mark of being in Malaysia, 19th of September, 2014. Seems like an age ago and almost a decade. And uh, over the last nine years, it's been an amazing ride and God's shown and taught us a lot. But I remember in those first couple of years when we first arrived and everyone's kind of like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? How long are you staying for? And, all the same questions and uh, people be like whoa like I can't believe that you would like move to the other side of the world and it was honestly like the greatest excitement and adventure and it was an awesome thing we were early married and uh, cool let's do this thing let's go to the other side of the world and we came with the peace of God we knew that he'd called us here so we had no anxiety about being in the wrong place or anything but that was God's call on our life but let me just encourage you for some of you it would be a higher cost than what we paid moving the other side of the world away from country and familiarity and family and all that stuff maybe for some of you to stay where you are to be faithful to the call that God has given you would actually seem that it comes at a higher price than what people were wowed at back in 2014 when we showed up to plant a church in another culture and part of the world. God has equipped and gifted you. His Holy Spirit is present in your life to help you fulfill and live out the call of God on your life. Now, many of you may be sitting there watching thinking, I don't know what my call of life is. Well, you do, because if you're a Christian and you know Jesus, it's to be a disciple of his and to go and make disciples. Matthew 28, 19, the Great Commission, go out and make disciples. Live as Christ has taught you and then help others to live that way too. And this isn't just that so we would collect a bunch of people that like live in the same way. This is that we would find freedom and live life in all of its fullness, all of its abundance, all that God planned and purposed us for, all that he gifted us with and put inside of us. This is the life that he calls us to. And if we would truly live that according to the wisdom of the Bible and not swaying and, and moving with the winds of culture and tide and the loudest voice out there, if we would hold steadfast and true to his word and follow his wisdom the bible promises us this will bring us health in our life not just our physicality but to all aspects of our life it would lead us to produce fruit that lasts for generations and carries forward i want to encourage us today if we could just seek first the kingdom of god it promises us in his word all else will be added those things that we may be chasing after striving for and on the edges hoping that we'll just become better let's 
flip it 180. Let's strive to live as God intended us to live. Let's live by his wisdom and his word, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And let's see what adventures and opportunities that he leads us into. We can look back on and say, wow, what a faithful God. We can look back on and see what a transformation he has made to how I live, how I speak, how I anticipate, how I engage with God. He can change everything about your world. Even the good parts can be even better by the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. I implore you to not chase after the ease and comfort that this world could maybe afford you, but seek first his kingdom and allow all else to be added to you. Let's take this week to ask God to audit our priorities. Let's be tough enough to to listen and soft enough to change. I believe God is calling us up to a life worthy of the calling that He's placed and written for over us before we were even born. I believe He's equipped us for it. I believe the greatest days so far are ahead of us as we get a front row seat of the transforming power of God in our own lives, but also in those around us. And if you're not following Jesus yet, this opportunity is open for you too. He's calling you up to a higher life, to a better life, to a fulfilling life, to a secure life, to a rich life, to one that is in freedom and not in bondage, that isn't gripping us with our sin or heavy with darkness, but that leads us into his everlasting life. Let me pray for you today. Father, I thank you so much that your word and your promises are true. God, I thank you that you are for us and not against us. I pray every person, wherever they're at today, God, give us the words as we pray today. I pray you'd reveal yourself to us. Show us the moves that we need to make, those unwise decisions or those ways of thinking that are maybe immature or shallow or just don't have the wisdom of God loaded into them. God, I pray through your word, show yourself to us and lead us to the path that leads to you. Father, help us with those distractions to put them to the side and help us to pursue your ways and your kingdom. And I thank you, God, that all else will be falling into place. Not that we just have this comfortable life, but that many others would follow in our wake and they would have found the freedom that we have in you as well. We thank you, Lord, that these promises are true today and we bless you with the way that we live our life from today onwards. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed this message, check out more on our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels. For those who want to know more about Jesus, find a Christian community to be a part of or who are exploring faith, why not join us this coming Sunday for our 11 a.m. service? We are a growing, vibrant church in the heart of Pataling Jaya in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. With an interactive kids program for 2 to 12s, facilities for parents with under 2s, and freshly brewed coffee available for 30 minutes before each service, we're confident you'll leave encouraged. Find out more on our website, hopecity.my, or follow us on Instagram and Facebook now. We can't wait to host you.